It is 6.57 p.m. We have a quorum and this meeting has been duly posted. Good evening and welcome to the monthly board meeting of the Dallas Independent School District Board of Trustees. If you will, will you please stand and join us for a moment of silence and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance and a salute to the flag, the Texas flag. Trustees present, starting on your left and on my right, are Trustee Mackey, Trustee Flores, Trustee Mitch K, Trustee Garcia, Trustee Marshall, our Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Michael Hinojosa, joins us, and I'm Justin Henry, Board President. Trustee Flores, could you please do the honors? Si hay alguien que necesita los servicios de un intérprete, aquí la señorita les puede ayudar con el equipo. Gracias. At this time, I would like to recognize any elected or public officials in the audience. I did see Ms. Earhart earlier. The Honorable, she's Renfro. Renfro. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't see the chair. She's here. Um, are there any other elected or public officials in the room? All right. Trustees, there are no recognitions tonight. Our agenda now calls for the public forum segment of our meeting. We will begin with speakers to agenda items, followed by speakers to non-agenda items. To ensure this meeting is held in an orderly manner, I'm asking speakers to please refrain from using individual names and to address the board and not individual trustees. Um, Ms. Scully, before we get started, um, we're going to move up um, Ms. Earhart and a group to recognize some of our excellent educators and principals through some troublesome time we've had in the last um, few months. If y'all, unless someone has an objection. I'd also like to recognize Trustee Johnson, who is in attendance tonight as well. Here we go. Now are we on? Good. My name is Harriet Earhart. I live at 5731 Swiss Avenue. <laughs> and I'm here uh, representing our community, our schools, an organization with 150,000 citizens involved. I'd like first to recognize my colleague, Hector, Hector Flores and Rena Hona, and ask that all other OCOS members stand. Usually, we are here to ask you to do something or not do something. That's not what we're here for tonight. Tonight, we're here to thank you. We did not want the amazing work of our educators to go unrecognized for the things they did in light of the storms in October. Our hope is that the plaque will be hung in the administration building for all to see. Before I make the presentation, I would like for the special staff that was involved in this to stand. We ask that the following administrators who represent their staff and teachers stand as we thank them. Okay, and they're going to come up here with us? Oh, that's good. Uh, we'll begin with Dr. Stephanie Elizalde the Chief of School Leadership Department, and Scott Lane, the Chief of Operations Department, and the Principal of Walnut Hill, Philip Potter, and the Principal of Cary, Naomi Salder, Salas, how'd I do, close? <laughs> Uh, and, the, and the principal of TJ, Sandy Massey, and the, their executive director, Dr. Melanie Pascal. 
And I'd like to read to you the plaque that OCS is presenting. Presented to the entire staff at Walnut Hill Elementary School, Cary Middle School, and Thomas Jefferson High School, along with the teams of the school leadership department and the operations department of Dallas ISD, in recognition for those who have reached the heights of excellence and have maintained that level of performance and attitude during and in the aftermath of the storms and tornadoes that struck Dallas on October 20th, 2019. Your unwavering dedication to the students and the families of the Dallas Independent School District are appreciated and valued more than you will ever know. Thank you. Given by our communities, our schools coalition, December 19th, 2019. Thanks. Thanks for letting us do this. Excuse me. Okay, so now we're going to continue the sequence. Um, okay. Do you mind calling out the names starting with the agenda items? Okay. I would like to remind speakers that you will have three minutes to speak. When you arrive at the microphone, please state your name and address. Our first speaker is Bill Betson, followed by Nancy Rodriguez. Howdy. My name is Bill Betson, 6717 Cliffwood, Dallas, Texas, 75237. I'm here to speak about something that you're going to have to look at your smartphones or at the computer in front of you to look at, if you would please. It involves three charts that are on my blog for today. All you have to do is Google Bill Betson blog and look at today's post and you can see these four charts I'm going to refer to. Unfortunately, I've often gotten up here and spoken about star test scores and how well DISD looks with them. This is regarding the editorial that was in the Dallas Morning News November 7th of, la of last month. And it's a rather tragic story. The first chart is the African American 8th grade NAEP National Assessment of Educational Progress, the nation's report card, reading scores. And the headline for that editorial was, So We Are Better Than Mississippi, Not Anymore. And that was talking about Texas, okay? So we're talking about the whole state of Texas. And our reading scores took one big dive and were much worse than, uh, than M Mississippi. That means we're the, at the bottom nationwide. The next chart is... The next three charts are all about all of our Dallas fourth graders who were tested all these over this 10-year period and all of our eighth graders who were tested over this 10-year period. And the, those charts are the entire 10-year period. The testing is only every other year. If you look, there is only one out of 20 scores over these 10-year period in these two class groups there is only one statistically significant positive score in 2015 in math for fourth graders. All of the other scores are either insignificant or decreasing. All of the reading scores in both eighth grade and fourth grade are negative, going down significantly. And the worst scores are for the last two testing periods covering four years when TEI was in effect. We've got to be paying attention to TEI and how it is correlated with dropping scores, especially on the national level. And that is a major problem. We need to be talking about this information. It can't get into the newspaper and everybody is quiet. 
we need to be talking. And I hope that DISD will step forward and allow a public dialogue to happen regarding the sinking scores. Thank, Thank you. you. Nancy Rodriguez, follow, followed by Jasmine Dawish. Good evening, trustees. My name is Nancy Rodriguez. I am a parent of a DISD student and a former employee of the district. I am here to speak to you about item 6.02 on the agenda, which revises and streamlines the district's ethics policies. In general, I think these are good revisions. But trustees, the best policy in the world does no one any good unless it is enforced. And I can tell you from firsthand experience that the district does a shoddy job of enforcing this policy. Let me recount my experience, documentation of which I've emailed to all of you. In the spring of 2016, while working in the special education department as a social worker, I came to suspect that a colleague had been failing to come to work despite being paid a salary by the district, but had instead been running a private real estate and construction business on district time over a period of months or years. What's more, I believe that he had been illegally employing at least one underage DISD student on his construction sites. I reported my suspicions to my supervisor and then to her supervisor and then to her supervisor, none of whom took any action so far as I could tell. Finally, I filed a report with the Office of Professional Standards whose investigation mostly confirmed my suspicions. The employee received a reprimand and I hear that a year later he voluntarily resigned with no further consequences. Good riddance. But what about my supervisor and her supervisor and her supervisor? Not only had they failed to do their jobs as supervisors by allowing this person to draw a paycheck for a job he didn't even bother to show up to for months or even years, but they had brazenly violated this policy, which requires that district employees report things like professional dishonesty and theft of services. What did the district do to enforce its policy? Well, trustees, I can tell you. My reports regarding their malfeasance were ignored. All three remained in positions of responsibility within the special education department. One has since left the district, but two remain to this day, supposedly overseeing the district's provision of services to its most vulnerable children. And we wonder what is wrong in special ed. Today's not the first time I've discussed this matter with a board trustee. When my first trustee first came into office, I had multiple correspondences with him about this and many other instances of blatant malfeasance by the district. So far as I can tell, neither he nor anyone else has done anything about them. Nor do I think mine is an isolated story. As I've spoken to parents and educators and community members, many have recounted examples of bad behavior that are overlooked, ignored, or even actively covered up by the district. Trustees, DISD has much to be proud of. It should be lauded for having improved both its bond rating and its star test scores. But it will never be the institution we all want it to be until it demands and enforces the highest standards of professional conduct and integrity from its employees. So I'm begging you, pass this item. It's a good policy. But don't just pass it and forget it. Insist that Mr. Inahosa enforce it, or if he won't, send him packing and find someone who will. Our kids can't wait. Jasmine Darwish, followed by Landon Finley. Jasmine is not present tonight. Landon Finley, followed by Tia Mitchell. Tia Mitchell, followed by Rosemary Kurtz. Is that Rosemary? I'm not Tia Mitchell. I'm oh, Rosemary sure. <laughs> Are you Rosemary? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm Rosie. I teach at a high school in Dallas ISD. At the beginning of this year, while admin were still getting organized, I managed to sneak a free response test in as my three-week assessment in my math class because our data analysis routines were not yet so rigid. Grading those tests was incredibly informative. Not only could I see exactly which topics my kids had mastered and which needed to be retaught, but I could even see exactly where students got lost, which step caused them to halt, which little algebraic trick confused them. I could see it all in their work. It was not difficult to grade with the rubric I'd created, and I finished grading the tests feeling something I hadn't felt in a very long time, like I'd actually gained information from looking at test results. Unfortunately, then we were driven back into the regimen of data, data, data. The most efficient way for administration to collect data is to relegate us all to common multiple choice assessments for every test every three weeks. 
This means all we ever do is create useless bad data for the sake of data. This is all driven by the Teacher Excellence Initiative, TEI, which epitomizes data for the sake of data. There are all kinds of creative, unique, and useful methods that teachers could use to assess students' mastery on topics. But no, we all have to use the same multiple choice tests every time so as to create data that is more easily analyzed. It doesn't matter that the data doesn't give us any guidance for our teaching, at least we generated some data. Multiple choice data tells us very little. It doesn't tell us why students got questions wrong. It doesn't show us any kind of thought process. It doesn't show us whether they guessed and happened to get it right or wrong, whether they eliminated some answer choices first, whether maybe we should give them partial credit for getting 90% of the process right. Under PEI and APEI, our administrators are judged in large part by how accurately their ratings of us correspond with our test scores. So why wouldn't administrators worry most about making sure they have a good idea of what our multiple choice test scores will look like? That's why they limit us to multiple choice tests, because they have their own livelihoods in mind. Everyone in a school is impacted by these damaging systems, TEI, APEI, and PEI, and it gives all of us an incentive to either teach to the test or to push teachers to teach to the test. In August, the Dallas Morning News published an op-ed from a science teacher in Plano ISD, an accomplished teacher who trains others. He wrote about how he stopped cheating by giving assessments that involved one-on-one -on -one conversations with students, tests given in groups, tests given where students are allowed note cards. I would love to try some of his ideas, but in the world of strict, common, multiple-choice assessments, my options are limited. This is the result of high-stakes over-testing that is encouraged by TEI. Last week, I was supposed to be preparing my students for the high-stakes district-made ACP test this week. However, it was difficult when many of my students were pulled out of class for retakes of the high-stakes state-made STAR test. In addition, my admin let me know that that week, I was expected to give a high-stakes six-weeks common assessment. So I was unable to prepare my kids for a test because I needed to give them another test, but then they weren't able to take that test because they were pulled out for a different test. And none of these absurd multiple choice tests tell me much of anything useful about my students. And thanks to the pressures of TEI, PEI, and APEI, I can't give them tests that would tell me what I need to know. Rosemary, um, I'm sorry, Charles Williams followed by Marvin Earl. Good evening, everyone, ladies and gentlemen, to the DISD board. My name is Charles Williams. I reside at 6543 Gentle River Drive, Dallas, Texas. On behalf of representing Pat Rainey drivers, we appreciate you all drafting us in as drivers to drive for the school district. We appreciate our job. We like what we do, but we would ask that you all would consider us and appreciate us more by considering us as far as holiday pay, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. We like what we do and we enjoy taking these kids to school, but we can't uh, accommodate when, when y'all don't show us the appreciation of giving us the holiday pay. When we at home for two weeks on a break and not being able to make a good earnest living for two weeks and we have to make up the difference in other ways, you know, and it's time so too hard to borrow money. But we asking the district and the board to uh, consider us in your budget in 2020 uh, as the drivers, as the monitors, and even as the, uh, uh, Pat Rainey, uh, Longview, and Cleaver. We ask that y'all would consider this in your budget. We like what we do. We come to work. We thank y'all for the bonus. But we ask that y'all would consider us in more than just, you know, being drivers. We're more than just drivers. But we transport these kids to and from school, to and from home. Regardless of what we deal with, we still try to put forth an effort to get these kids safely to their destination. Thank you all for y'all support. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Marvin Earl, followed by Delna Bryan. Delna Bryan, followed by Bruce Copeland. Good evening, Mr. Superintendent, members of the board. Again, I march to the beat of a different drummer. Over the years, life gets so busy, but it's time for us to pause. We have done a lot in 2019. 
I was driving along the other day and I heard that we got an A from TEA for having the best pre-K schools in Texas. I was proud of that. We have to use the spirit of the law instead of the letter of the law to accomplish more. It is the season to share the joy here. We can put our differences behind us for a few days. We have some of the most authentic people working genuinely and with a passion that I have never seen in any other school district that I have taught in. And I've taught in quite a few. Let us go home to a joyous holiday. In closing, I will ask that you put the map of life together. Let us add the person who is the reason for this season. Let us multiply our good deeds. Let us divide our blessings. Let us subtract our fears that will equal to the premier district that we have here in Dallas ISD. I close by wishing you all here and abroad Feliz Navidad, Felices Pascuas, Merry Christmas, a joyous holiday. Thank you. Ruth Copeland followed by Zara Darwish. Zara Darwish followed by Diane Birdwell. Good evening. My name is Zara Darwish. I live at 5126 Columbia Avenue. Uh, I have uh, two children at Woodrow Wilson High School, um, one in the IB program and one uh, in a special education contained classroom, um, functional life skills uh, and total communication. Uh, I, about a year and a half ago, um, talked to the teachers and um, staff about the lack of training that our kiddos were receiving for um, career readiness. Um, my child, like many, cannot, uh, will not ever be accepted to MACMAC. Um, and uh, we had to figure something out. There was no voc vocational opportunities um, at our school. So we started a uh, program, a nonprofit, um, group called the Woodrow Percolators. I don't know if any of you know about it. It's a coffee cart business that we um, were able to get 501c3 status and um, we have tapped into autism organizations to fund uh, seed money for the coffee cart. Um, so a year later, fast forwarding a year later, we have um, uh, the kids are brewing coffee every morning for the entire staff of Woodrow Wilson. Um, kiddos who weren't using language had no idea how to uh, initiate a conversation, uh, prepare a, a product, and serve it, um, take money, the transactions that they're learning about uh, taking orders and uh, dealing with money, giving change, giving customer service. It's preparing them for after school, for um, this community who at 80% is usually unemployed, uh, people with um, severe disabilities. Um, and so I just wanted to say that, you know, this wasn't something that, that was initially started by special education or DISD. It was parent driven and I understand that at um, other schools where the parents are not as, um, they're not as, uh, they don't participate as much for whatever reasons. I think that this is a great model that we can use. I mean, what school does not need um, 
uh, coffee service in the morning. I think it's something that everybody would love. And I think it is, the, the teacher was saying that the numbers, the test scores, everything has started to improve with these children. I've seen their communication skills, their, their self uh, worth um, it's just it's wonderful to see the effects of them having this business and I hope it's something that the district um, can back um, somehow thank you Mr. And Wish your thank you time thanks has for your time expired. Diane Birdwell followed by Amy to good evening I'll be coming back every month asking for the same thing a year ago Last December, I came before you to ask for a reduction in the ratio of counselors and monitors to students. A year ago, I was on Channel 8 about it. And I've given you all homework, and I think they've already handed it out to you. I came back in the spring and asked again. I came back again this fall. No change was made to the budget for 2019-2020, and now you all are getting ready to start working on the budget for 2020-2021. Maybe now, between the board and the top administration in this district, you will heed my request before a tragedy occurs on one of our campuses. We've had a shooting right across from Adamson, one on a Seagoville campus in just the last week. We've got kids overdosing from vaping. We've got kids considering suicide, others who have shut down emotionally and academically. Weapons and drugs have been found on students this year. Currently, in Texas, not just in DISD, it's a 451, 450 to 1 ratio for counselors. The national recommendation is 250 to 1. I'm asking for 250 to 300 to 1. I'm asking you to stop spending money on programs that micromanage teachers down to how many times they walk around a room and how they check on people's papers. I'm asking you to shift your priorities to students and their lives, not just their test scores. Because how much is a child's mental health worth to you? Is it worth more than a test score, more than a bonus, or more than bragging rights? The Governor of Texas said in his 40-point plan for improving school safety after yet another school shooting that killed multiple people that there should be two counselor, uh, should be more counselors, one that focuses on academic issues and one on students' mental health. I'm begging you to bring back something that we older veterans can remember, the lead counselor, to end all of this. The comprehensive co counselors are overwhelmed. Instead of spending $3.5 million a year on teaching trust, you could have bought well, not bought, but you could have paid for 60 more counselors. Instead of $350,000 for student surveys for TEI, you could get us six to seven more counselors. We could grow our own counselors the way we seem to be growing our own administrators. Right now, counselors have to handle everything that walks through the doors, from spreadsheets and reports and schedules and schedule changes to 504s, parent meetings, and of course the kid who's about to crack up in the hallway because they're having a crisis at home. By creating a lead counselor position, they can handle the FAFSA completions for CCMR that y'all want to increase on, mandatory classes on drug abuse, bullying, increased interest in military and job and college prep programs, 504s, teacher compliance thereof, scholarships and grants. Their well-being is more important than a test score. It is more important than ACP. And I know that while you say you truly care about the kids, in this season, I want you to demand that we lower the ratio to 250 to 300 to 1 for each of our students. Real reform is changing what is not working, and our counselors are overloaded, we in the classrooms are overloaded, and the kids are stressed. If you want a safe campus, Thank you, help us. Ms. Thank you, and Merry Christmas. Amy Tawil, followed by Arthur Fleming. Hi, my name's Amy Tawil, 1330 Rainbow Drive, Dallas, Texas, 75208. The district and its website defines Rosemont Upper Campus as 6th through 8th grade middle school dual language magnet. Yet on the newly released promotional video, 3rd grade FLESS, foreign language in elementary school, was featured as well as 4th grade dance. At the end of the video, the host encourages viewers to go to the DISD website. When viewers get there, they will only see information regarding the middle school magnet, but grades three through five are also housed at the upper campus. It's hard for me to believe that after 14 years, this administration still does not understand the configuration of Rosemont. Tonight, I want to talk about upending two campuses by moving third grade down to lower campus for no other apparent reason than to fit in a model. I've been told school leadership wants Rosemont Upper Campus to fit in the same model as Travis or Pleasant Grove two-way dual language tag. 
Those schools are fourth through eighth grade application magnets. Rosemont Upper Campus is currently a third through fifth grade neighborhood two-way dual language school and a two-way dual language middle school magnet. Half of the school's third through fifth graders are not even eligible to apply to the middle school. And students from other dual language elementary schools apply to come to Rosemont at middle school for the magnet. The same model should not be used for all of these schools. This move is a big change for our campuses. It means lower campus will be the only pre-K-3 campus in the district. It means the incredible early learning environment created at lower campus will now be infiltrated by STAR testing, unnecessarily locking down our youngest students. This move means the school will need to limit transfers by reducing each lower campus grade level by two sections. It's confusing to me that the district is trying very hard to attract new students, but is limited in enrollment at a very popular and well-established school. The new housing immediately adjacent to our campuses have home values of $500,000 to $1.2 million. We have captured some of those families and hope to attract others. We had planned to expand tuition-based pre-K. Now this will not be possible. As Principal Barker states in the video, we have applied to be a third through fifth grade STEAM D choice school. Why would leadership even consider separating third grade from this opportunity? The district's plan for upper campus is to actually reduce the number of classrooms at the upper campus. Why would taxpayers spend millions to do this? Is this why third grade is moving to lower campus? Moving third grade down to lower not only affects students, it affects staff. Third grade teachers are left without star support from their peers in other grade levels. There is no other school in this district that isolates third grade like this move would do. It seems the decision we made uh, was made to move third grade to lower campus was made without a lot of thought, without much sound reasoning, and Thank with you, zero Leo. community input. It seems Your once again that our schools south of the river Fleming, are being told what to do, where Peter, north of the river and east of the river and east, Mr. the communities Mr. get to participate in the decisions. Thank you, Mr. Fleming. You have the floor. Arthur Fleming, followed by Juanita Cervantes. Good evening, everybody. How you doing? Uh, first of all, I bring a sweet greeting from the NAACP Dallas Executive Committee, of which I'm a member. Uh, and what I want to talk about is some areas of disrespect, and hopefully next year maybe we can do a little bit better. Uh, there's a perceived lack of disrespect for our community. Um, I start with Senate Bill 1882, ALEC, the privatization program. Uh, all but two of the exec, uh, all but two of you board members voted for that program. That's that's a privatization program, and so I just like to say, if if you all like privatizations that well, go work for charters, and let some community people uh, come and have those positions. Uh, clean water. Now we've been talking about getting clean water in the South uh, for some years now. Uh, again, disrespectful. You know the water's still dirty. Okay. Uh, stucco or brick. You came to the community and said, uh, do you want stucco or brick? I'm going to let you vote. They voted for brick. But what do we have? Stucco. Disrespectful. Uh, the community eyes and ears, our watch person, our watchdog person, Bruce Copeland, has recently been barred from meetings that would let the community know what's going on. That's disrespectful. Uh, why are you blocking our representative? Uh, why do we need uh, a watchdog? Well, we need a watchdog because DISD don't have a quality or compliance office that actually looks over this money and how it's spent. And, uh, you know, we don't know why that is. Uh, now, it's my understanding that m m uh, Mr. Lane and Mr. Stoosley are part of the problem as far as not wanting him in those meetings. Maybe they all resign. Uh, now, they're both nice fellas, but they seem to have a problem with respect in our community. Uh, at some point, this DSD board and its employees need to respect the community. And remember, you work for the community, community don't work for you. Uh, Merry Christmas, and thank you. Juanita Cervantes, followed by Stuart Becker. Stuart Becker, followed by Hope Lee. Hi, my name is Stuart Becker, and I live at 1702 North Jupiter Road, and I'm a member of Alliance AFT Local 2260. I work as a teacher in the district, but I'm here tonight, like many others, to speak out against TEI. 
But before I begin, I would like to start by thanking the trustee from District 3 for attending our union's TEI committee meeting last week. We appreciate the opportunity for dialogue with the district and we look forward to meeting with additional trustees in the future. Uh, the reason I became involved in the TEI committee was because of the damage I saw it enacted our, on our students. I have been teaching for three years and I cannot begin to explain how frustrating it is that DISD encourages teachers to teach to the test. I did not enter education to teach students how to pass the test, but this is what TEI forces us to do. In DISD, teachers get paid more money if their students score higher on a specific set of tests. Skills such as thinking critically and also sparking a love of learning within children take a back seat in DISD. In DISD, we value educating our children to pass multiple choice tests. As we heard last month, this causes incredible stress on both our educators and on our students. Teachers are literally threatening students and telling them they have to skip their birthday parties and sporting events to increase their test scores. I'm sure you can imagine what directors are telling principals and what principals are telling teachers. The sad thing is that these are good people, but TEI has created a system that encourages this behavior. This is all a real shame because Dallas has some incredible teachers who could do great things if they were free to teach the whole child. Instead, we are teaching to the test. Since TEI has been enacted, we have wit witnessed our students fall behind their peers on a national level. The nation's report card, also known as NAEP, shows Dallas students have actually regressed since TEI was enacted. How is it possible if our star scores are increasing, but NAEP scores are going down? It's because in DISD we teach the star test. I propose we teach our students to read, write, and think critically instead of teaching to any test. As currently enacted, TEI is a disaster of a compensation program. We should get rid of TEI and move to a peer review evaluation system. But in the meantime, I do have a couple of suggestions that would mitigate TEI's damage to our students and educators. One, remove the school star score from the evaluation rating. Teachers are currently punished and lose points for teaching at struggling campuses. This makes no sense because it pushes teachers to avoid teaching in the, at the most in-need schools. We should be encouraging our best teachers to go where the students are most in need. Two, remove the, uh, excuse me, remove the student survey or at least decouple it from salary. This is obvious for a number of reasons but, reasons, but losing points because the student says they only somewhat talk about Algebra 2 at home is insulting. What I really want is to teach in a district where teachers can teach and students are more than just a test score. Thank, Thank you for you, your Mr. time. Thank you, Mr. Becker. Hope Lee followed by Rena Honey. Hello, my name is Hope B. Lee and my address is uh, 1011 Steeplechase Court, Grand Prairie, Texas, 75052. Uh, I'm a pre-K teacher at William Anderson Blair. Uh, education is my second career. I started working at Blair 20 years ago. I started my 20th year uh, this August. Most of my parents think that I am a master or a distinguished teacher when they think about TEI, but because 90% of the students that I teach in pre-K are pre-K ready 90% every year, but I am not according to the rubric that is uh, developed every year after their scores. Uh, I am also the Vice President of Teacher Affairs for NEA Dallas. I'm here this evening to express my concerns regarding teacher retention. My first concern is regarding the structure of TEI. Uh, as administration and the board hopefully know, that NEA is the only organization that filed a class action uh, suit regarding TEI that was filed uh, on September 2015. Uh, that suit has gone to, went to uh, TEA, which uh, said that we did not have a grievable issue, then went on to the Travis County, and then uh, we appealed it. It has been returned to Austin for a decision saying that we did have a right to grieve TEI and the scorecards that went out that particular year. So a couple of questions that I have is what, comes, what happens if 
the commissioner now or a court comes back and says the DEI is not a fair and equitable system. Is there a salary system in place? Um, and I have attached a, um, a salary score, uh, salaries uh, summary of all of the districts uh, in the Dallas-Fort Worth. It is small, and I was going to bring a hand lens, but my phone worked better than a hand lens. So if you want to look at it, you can see that Dallas, out of one out of 48 uh, districts, usually becomes an average. And if we consider ourselves to be a premier district and we want our students to be great and excellent, I'm not sure why we are content with saying that our teachers will only be paid an average rate. Um, the second uh, issue that I'm concerned about is that um, ACE schools, all teachers are required now to do ACE work but are not allowed to have ACE compensation. Rena Honey, followed by Yash Karlik. Okay, I don't know where my paper is, so I'll try to remember as much as I can. Rena Honey, uh, 30, uh, 334 Center Street. I'm president of Alliance AFT and co-chair of um, our community, our schools. It's no secret at all that TEI is obviously controversial in many different areas by the trustees, they're not held accountable for it. They like it. They're not compensated by it. With our administrators, they're not held accountable for it, or they are in some ways, but their pay is not tied to it. But our teachers and our support pers professional support personnel, they are. What I know that most of you know is that we do have, Alliance AFT does have a... Um, TEI committee where we have been working two to three years to try to come up with solutions because we know the appetite of the district is not to get rid of TEI. You all think it's wonderful even after hearing from people that are evaluated by it every year, paid by it every year, and the, dis the targeted distribution causes such anxiety for so many people and the impact that this is having on our students is very disturbing to many of the people that are in front of the kids every single day. But what we want you to know is that we're appreciative of those of you that have been able to be at some of the meetings, to have those conversations. We're working diligently to come up with suggestions that the, hopefully the, um, the administration would consider of things that could be done. You've heard a couple of them tonight. But it's important that the people that are directly impacted every single year by this feel that it's fair, it's equitable, that it can be explained, and still many of our campus administrators cannot help their employees understand TEI. They can't help them understand how to get it better. They can't help them with hardly any of it because they don't know. They're new themselves. So we just want to bring things forward, be collaborative, and ask that you really pay attention to the ones that are directly affected every single day because it's not a, a system that works directly for uh, all of our teachers that are evaluated by it. The other thing I'd like to say very quickly, you've heard from one of the transportation uh, workers this evening. We'd like for you all to consider a stipend for not only the CDL drivers, they have it, but all of the drivers and the monitors. Maybe it's half as much because the extra requirement is not required for driving, but the dissension it's caused in the conversations because they got a stipend and the others did not make them feel undervalued. Thank you. Yash Kali, followed by Michael Gonzalez. Hey there, uh, my name is Yash Kalik. I graduated high school in 2017. Uh, I have friends and former teachers 
still in the DISD district, so I guess uh, their issues really mean a lot to me. So I'll be reading tonight a few excerpts from the series of comments Alliance AFT received on this anonymous survey about TEI. Included in comment number seven, the primary reason I am qualified now and was not previously is that my course load changed from on-level classes filled with many low English proficiency and special education students to only pre-AP students. My test scores have soared without dramatic increases, without dramatic changes to my teaching. It's clear to me how much TEI relies on what students are in your classes. Test scores directly correlate with economic status and the pre-AP students I have are significantly wealthier than the students I've taught previously. Included in comment number 66, the TEI does not accurately reflect teachers' ability to teach. We do not teach cookie cutter students, so we should not have a cookie cutter system for teachers. From comment number 49, I believe that TEI is a way for the district to withhold pay from teachers and force them to teach strategies and gimmicks to students <coughs> instead of content knowledge. From comment number 11, it is a complex picture that TEI tries to boil down into a spreadsheet friendly formula. From comment number 62, Dallas ISD does not respect veteran teachers, the schools in critical need, and they definitely do not respect special education. Because if they did, they would compensate their teachers and value them for the dedication and hard work that we put in on a daily basis. If TEI continues, the schools that continue to thrive will be the ones that, stud that have students whose parents are financially stable and the schools that are hard to staff will continue to suffer. If TEI stays, educa educators will continue to cheat, especially for STAR, so they can get their raises. From comment number 75, I am very disappointed that I am not trusted to use my professional judgment. I must adhere to comp incompetent administrators and coaches random unorganized points of view. I must administer test questions daily. I am subject to rigid schedules regardless of students needs and insane class disruptions. From number 36, under the TEI system I feel degraded as if my commitment to my students is meaningless. And finally, and uh, I would like the trustees to take away the most, from comment number 45, the district needs to allow union members to work with the board to find an evaluation system that is fair and equitable. I thank you for your time. Michael Gonzalez, followed by Dr. Grace and Cor. Michael. Hi. Uh, my name is Michael Gonzalez. And I'm reading a comment left in a recent anonymous survey by Alliance AFT about TEI. Since the TEI system has been introduced, I have seen my students' achievement levels drop. The kids are coming to high school less and less prepared. Additionally, I have watched some of the best teachers I've had the pleasure to work with leave DISD because of TEI. I have watched evaluators use the system to torture teachers they don't like for personal reason and even run off teachers. The morale in my school has dropped significantly. When I started at my school years ago, people were happy. I used to love coming to work. I loved my students. I loved my colleagues. I felt fully supported by my, administra by my administration. Now, now I feel like it is a gotcha game. I feel picked over. We are swamped with paperwork in the name of our TEI scores. Every little thing is viewed under a microscope. The TEI system is why I'm leaving teaching. I hate every day of my job. That's, why my that's what my passions have dis 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 disintegrated into, a job. I want a career, not a job. I want to be respected for my faithfulness, hard work, dedication, relentless pursuit of knowledge, education, passion, drive. My lesson plans went from a tool I used to help my class to a document used against me in the court of DISD. Everything I do must be justified. I get in trouble for reading to my students important parts of a text. I get in trouble for not reading to my students enough. I get in trouble if a child doesn't do their work. I am not allowed to enter a grade of zero unless I call a parent first. I teach upperclassmen in high school. I expect my students to go to college. I do not expect their college professor to notify them if they have a zero. I do not expect their college professor to hold their hand to make sure they get their work done. I push them with advanced texts and dig as deep as we can into them to pull the wisdom from them. I show and guide my students into thinking about text on a philosophical level in the hopes that they will continue to ponder not just life's mysteries or what they want their purpose to be, but to evaluate the world around them and act in a way that, that betters this world, not only for themselves, but for the community. 
They leave knowing that I will always support them if they need me. They know I am here to help with their academics for as long as they ask. They know that I see them as my kids and love them for the people they are and the people they will be. All of that said, I feel like I am in, a, in an abusive relationship with my job. I have had to secretly plan my escape, keeping my lips sealed because the other victims with their Stockholm Syndrome might turn me in and I will be punished. I've stayed because I love my students. I've stayed because I could protect them from the idiocracy being passed down from DISD. I will miss my kids. I am sure I will cry when I have to leave them knowing that they will be my last students, at least for the next few years. But I have to go or this job will kill me. That's what you have to do when you escape an abusive partner. Leave. This is a shortened version of this comment uh, with a few parts cut out for the sake of time. But the teacher ended with this line. I am sorry for the long message. I have kept my mouth shut for years. It exploded out of me. Please help us. It does not have to be this way. Thank you. Dr. Grace Ann Carr, followed by Rudy Karimi. To Superintendent uh, Penny Holster, to the board. My name is Dr. Grace Ann Carr. I reside at 2201 Overton Road, 75216. I am going to touch bases on your transportation. The transportation is my department right now. I taught for 15 years. The students are still mine. I'm only interested in trying to get the transportation up to par. We have bad buses. We have buses that are being stopped with children on the bus. We have to have someone else to bring a bus to take the children off the bus. Our job is safety. We're supposed to get those children to and from the pickup, to and from school, and get them safely home. We can't do it if we don't get the buses. We have to have them. We need you all to get down and pull that and get us some buses. Second of all, we need our bus lot. We have a bus lot that we're leasing. That's money being spent. We don't need to lease from Lancaster. We need our own bus born so that we can get more drivers, more safety drivers, we're having a lot of problems with the monitors. They don't want to ride the buses because the buses break down. If you leave the lot at 5, 5.30 in the morning, you have a route that you have to pick up a student at 6.15, you're going to be late because the bus quit three blocks up. Why do we have buses that, that are running so bad that the mechanics don't even know what's wrong? They're saying, oh, we don't know. Just bring the bus in. So can we get you all the board to try to look into that and get us some buses so that we can get these children to and from. You say they are ours. You say this is where we get our money. This is where we get paid. I know that's, that's what they're telling me. This is how I get paid. I want to take them to and from safely, safely every day. The blue buses, they're okay. Some places they can get into, but we can't pick up but nine. Sometimes we have to send two or three buses back to pick up the extra load. We're growing. We're growing by the minute. Can you all please see to it that this gets taken care of? Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Our last speaker is Rudy Karimi. Hi, good evening. Um, happy holidays. Um, my name is Rudy Karimi. I'm at 306 South Glasgow, Dallas, Texas, 75214. I'm here to speak to you about the DISD interlocal agreement. Uh, between Woodrow Wilson High School and Randall uh, Winters Park, uh, specifically a few violations that I would like to spread awareness on, seek your support with to mitigate and improve on as we enter the new year. Number one, uh, control, supervision, and safety. This is section 4.6 and 5.4 of the thick hand handout that I uh, distributed earlier. Uh, we've had three major disruptions, uh, brawls um, on our street in less than two weeks. Uh, seen in Article 1 of the small handout that I distributed, uh, there's a very disturbing street scene. Uh, this happened right in front of my neighbor's house. Uh, this also happened in front of my house. In the last few days, we've had increased uh, DISD and DPT presence there. This needs to continue into the new year. Uh, we believe this is the best way to resolve what's happening on our street next to Woodrow Wilson. Uh, number two, uh, parking. This is Section 4.3 of the agreement. Uh, this is seen in Article 2 of the handout. Um, these, these signs are threatening, and I'm, I'm pretty sure they're illegal to put at a public park. Uh, the school should be sharing these spaces at a public park, not reserving them at a public park. 
Um, the third item, uh, facilities and availability. This is section 5.2 of the interlocal agreement. Um, all facilities should be open to Dallas citizens, uh, seen in Article 3. Um, there are uh, fences and locks all over the place at Randall Park. I'm not talking about the fences around the softball fields or the baseball fields. I understand why they're there. They're to keep balls in play and, and what have you. I am talking about the penitentiary-style fences around the backside of the park. Uh, these are the extra fences that uh, keep people out of the common areas, the pathways, and various access points to the park, this public park. Uh, that said, uh, come the new year, uh, I'd like to uh, sit down with many of you, our council members, our parks board rep, uh, to work out a solution to make this a better park for those who live immediately around Woodrow Wilson High School. Thank you. This concludes our speakers. Thank you to all of our speakers this evening. We're going to move on to Section 4, um, starting with the superintendent's report. Thank you, Trustee Henry, members of the board. A couple of quick items. Number one is the district got very good news from Standard & Poor's rating agency. The district has been upgraded at AA+, which is the second highest, highest possible rating, and coupled with the um, permanent school fund guarantee, this allows the district to be very efficient in the bond program. So I want to thank all of our financial staff and the board direction in making sure we achieve this high-quality rating from Standard & Poor's. Second of all, we also had very fortunate to have our Principal of the Year celebration Despite some of the gloomy news we heard tonight, it was very inspirational to be at our principal meeting last week. I know a couple of trustees were there, and they got to share in the very inspirational type of activities that our principals were congratulated on. Our elementary principal of the year is Ida Escovedo, who has been a long-term, um, over almost two-decade principal at Margaret B. Henderson. We had uh, our secondary winner was Francine Taylor, who has recently been promoted to H. Grady Spruce, but did a tremendous job at a middle school in the Pleasant Grove community. And then Nancy Bernardino was named our choice school winner, and she's done a phenomenal job in starting our very inspirational solar prep school uh, that is very inspiring all over this community. And then also, we were also inspired by 23 master principals who were recognized for their outstanding performance. That concludes my report this evening. Thank you for that inspiring report, Dr. Hinoza. Uh, trustees, we're up to item 4.02, Board of Trustee Committee Reports. Do we have any committee reports tonight? Okay, if we do not have any committee reports tonight, let's go to district reports, trustee district reports, and we'll start with you, Trustee Mackey. So from District 7, I first of all want to piggyback on what Dr. Hinojosa said. Uh, we had five master principals from District 7 that I'm proud to announce, Mr. or Dr. Macario Hernandez from Trini Garza, uh, Lourdes Garduño from Winneka Elementary School, Kelly Sanchez from Arcadia Park Elementary School, Catherine Carter from L. O'Donnell Elementary School, and Salam Hussein from Quintanilla Middle School. So congratulations to all of them. And the sixth one, actually, uh, Principal Ida Escobedo, who was also named the elementary school principal of the year. So that's a huge um, celebration for all of those, uh, all of those principals. Uh, I also want to give kudos to Arcadia Park Elementary School second grade teachers Janika Ward and Kenshell Hills, who received grants from Toyota and United Way to purchase STEM supplies for technology. Um, huge shout out to. G Gisela Ortiz, captain of the Sunset Dance Company, who won a $3,000 scholarship for Telemundo and Wingstop Student Athlete of the Month. And then congrats to Quintanilla Middle School teacher Twin Nguyen, who was awarded $10,000 by Texas Instruments Innovations for demonstrating quality instruction and building student achievement in science. Thank you, Trustee Mackey. Trustee Flores. Thank you. Uh, first, I want to congratulate Dominic Paterno, a fourth grade student from Harry C. Withers Elementary School, for being among the eight Dallas ISD students to advance to the MLK Junior, Dr. MLK Junior Oratory Competition in January at WH Adamson High School. Uh, Withers continues to dominate this uh, competition, and we hope that they're going to bring it home uh, once, once again. Uh, I'd also like to thank the community for their input and feedback. 
on the rebuilding of, DI, of Dallas uh, District 1 schools as a result of the recent storms. Uh, we've held uh, at least three community forums so far and look forward to hosting more. We had one, um, I hosted two, and then the administration uh, hosted one about the, the con planned configuration for those uh, elementary schools and, and the middle schools. And so uh, we received pretty good uh, input at that uh, community meeting. And we're excited about the possibilities of what could happen at the Cary TJ site. Um, and I continue to uh, look forward to work together with the District 1 family and the community around uh, Cary and TJ uh, as we develop plans for the new facilities and continue forward the school traditions and pride uh, for those schools. And lastly, I wish to wish everyone a safe and happy holiday season and a great break. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Flores. Trustee Mitchka. Uh, Trustee Flores, are you going to show us the front page story? I'll put away. Yeah. I think it was, was going to take it home. <laughs> so, I forget, so, so Trustee Mitchka is referring to the front cover of the Preston Hollow People, where we're celebrating, uh, Principal Massey and I are celebrating the, uh, the donation from the Jones Family Foundation for TJ. Very exciting. Front page. Thank you. Yes, that, that is inspiring. <laughs> I'm inspired. Um, I'd like to congratulate the District 3 teachers who were recognized as 2019 Teachers of the Year by the Greater East Dallas Chamber of Commerce. Jennifer Idokotu uh, from L. L. Hotchkiss Elementary School and Jose Delgado from Brian Adams High School. I'd also like to congratulate Becky Brown at Emmett J. Conrad High School, who is one of the finalists for the district's Secondary Teacher of the Year. I'd also like to um, tell you about uh, Kavion Morris, a 15-year-old ninth grade hero from Brian Adams High School who was walking to school uh, one morning and saw that uh, a toddler was uh, in distress, and that toddler was in distress because her s sister was drowning in a swimming pool at the apartment complex. Uh, Kavion sprung into action, jumped, jumped into the pool, and and rescued the the little girl. Um, what I didn't know until uh, a few weeks uh, later, when uh, Congressman Eddie Bernice Johnson was honoring Kavion was that after he rescued the girl, he proceeded to school sopping wet and went to class and was, at that point, that's how everyone found out that he had, um, he had um, jumped in the water. But he was uh, so intent on getting to class on time that that's that's what he did he got there on time um, I would also uh, point out that um, during the presentation at uh, Congressman uh, Johnson Congresswoman Johnson's office um, and the principal of, at of Brian Adams was describing this incident and one of the people who just happened to be there was the uh, great aunt of uh, the toddler who was rescued, and that was quite an emotional uh, moment. So um, with that, I'd like to um, wish you all happy holidays. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Mishka. Trustee Garcia. Hi, everyone. I'd like to congratulate Spruce High School Principal Francine Taylor for earning the Dallas ISD Secondary Principal of the Year Award. And the school's librarian, Ms. Tracy Walker-Reed, who is recognized as one of the top 10 librarians in the country by the American Library Association. Congratulations to both educated, both gifted educators. Also, congratulations to Dorsey Elementary Principal Rubina Sanchez, Teich Elementary Principal Damian Stovall, Ruby Ramirez from Stag in Pleasant Grove, Gabriel Dixon from Young Women's Steam Academy, and Julie Singleton from Central Elementary for being named 2019 Master Principals. Check out that District 4 talent. Congratulations to the Young Women's STEAM Academy's John Four and Stag at Pleasant Grove, Katie Benningfield, who are finalists for the Dallas ISD Teacher of the Year. And finally, huge kudos to John Quincy Adams students and staff for organizing holiday food drives, collecting canned foods, 
to donate to the Pleasant Grove Christian Church Food Pantry and the North Texas Food Bank, respectively. That concludes this report. Trustee Solis. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. President. Congratulations to uh, Dr. Nancy Bernardino, who is the uh, principal, uh, one of the principals of the year at Solar Preparatory School for Girls at James Bonham. Uh, WFAA recently ran a story highlighting Principal Bernardino, um, her personal story and the story about Solar Preparatory School for Girls, and it was a dynamic video. I would encourage you, if you can, to just Google that and learn more about why she is a principal of the year this year. And not only is she a principal of the year, but she's also one of the District 8 uh, master principals, I think for, in her case, particularly two years in a row. But there are also other master principals from District 8, from Burnett, Sonia Los Loscott, from uh, Joe May, he's now moved on, but for the work that he did in the previous year, Israel Rivera, um, from Rusk Middle School, Juan Cordoba, from Dessa, Arnoldo Zuniga, and from Solar Girls, as I've mentioned, Nancy Bernardino. So congratulations to all of our master principals. Um, also, I want to say congratulations to two Teacher of the Year finalists that are from District 8, uh, Mr. Eric Hill, who is from Burnett and recently won uh, a National Teacher of the Year Award, and also Mary Sly from Solar Steam uh, Girls as well. And f I also want to say congratulations to uh, all of the great work that's been happening at the Multiple Careers Magnet Center, particularly a, a recent story that I read in the Dallas uh, ISD Hub um, in which we are now partnering with Eastfield College uh, to ensure that we have certifications on customer service uh, for our students. And if I'm not mistaken, there are 40 students that just recently received um, a certification. So congratulations to them and the great work that's happening at Multiple Careers Magnet and also for what they recently did in creating uh, holiday toys, which they do every year, this year toys that were delivered to children and families that are staying at the Ronald McDonald House um, because that they have to stay there to get the medical services necessary uh, in the medical district. So thank you so much for going above and beyond students at Multiple Career Magnet Center. And while I recognize that we there are no items pulled for debate today, there is one item that I want to particularly sh uh, call out um, because it took a ton of time and effort and diligence and a relentless pursuit of results. And that is going to be the, as of next year, first year Montessori Magnet School, Montessori, not Magnet School, Montessori Transformation School happening downtown. And that has been an idea that's been worked on for many, many years, and there were a ton of people that were involved in getting that done. I want to particularly say thank you to the leadership at Downtown Dallas Incorporated for never giving up on Dallas ISD and for working with us, but very specifically want to say thank you to our administration because they worked hard to find an appropriate facility and also not to give up on that concept. So congratulations uh, for the Montessori School and Trustee uh, Henry for your leadership in making sure that we could close the deal. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Trustee Solis. Trustee Johnson. Um, congratulations to the outstanding young public speakers from District 5 who have advanced to the finals of the Martin Luther King Junior Oratory Competition. Josira King, fifth grader from William Brown Miller Elementary School. Dynasty McKinney, fourth grader from Clara Oliver Elementary School. Ayana Gee, fifth grader from John Ely Brown, Ryan Elementary School. James Henderson III, fifth grader for T from T.L. Marcellus Elementary School as well. Uh, thank you to, to Love for Kids for sponsoring an amazing afternoon full of holiday surprises for 10 students at Pinkston High School. Kudos to Roosevelt uh, High School Alumni Association for providing blessings bags filled with non-perishable food items to students during the Thanksgiving and winter break. Also, I want to say congratulations to um, uh, Townview uh, Magnet School for the Kids on their success, and congrats also to Miss Tony Neal, uh, who put, to put together a great program. I also want to uh, thank everyone for your prayers um, and uh, texts that I received during this uh, very difficult time and season in my life. I, can, I ask that you continue to pray for me, continue to pray for our family. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Johnson. Trustee Marshall. Thank you, Mr. President. I'll give the District 2 report. First, I want to congratulate the Woodrow ACU Senior Captain Tracy James, who was selected for the All-Conference First Team, and James Medden, Samaj Johnson, and Marshall Prather also earned academic All-State, so congrats to them. On December 7th, the Woodrow Wildcats wrestling team came in second place overall at the Cougar, Cougar Classic, so great job for those guys. I also want to give a shout-out shout out to uh, North Dallas High School. Their auditorium began a lighting and sound makeover. Uh, thanks to the amazing holiday donation from Hillsong Dallas. We're very thankful for that. 
Um, want to congratulate the JL Long's Lady Bucks who played in the Rock the Bells basketball tournament and won both first and second place for seventh and eighth grade. Way to represent. Uh, there's also lots of great volunteer activities going on in multiple District 2 schools, just to name a few. The JL Long's uh, boys 7th and 8th grade basketball team served meals at the Salvation Army. Ben Franklin had a fun time making toys for dogs that are in, in shelters. North Dallas LULAC students gave back to the community by helping out at the North Texas Food Bank. And the Woodrow baseball team served up hot, hot, served up hot holiday meals at the Salvation Army. Um, I want to thank uh, Chief Elizalde for coming out to celebrate our Woodrow and Skyline principals at their Holiday Appreciation Bowling Night. I was thrilled to attend as well, and it was a fun evening. I uh, also want to congratulate Michael Jones from JL Long for winning the Greater East Dallas Chamber Teacher of the Year Award. And congratulate Principal Melanie Manns from Mockingbird Elementary for being named a Master Principal for the second year in a row. Um, also, shout out to Dandy Rogers. Education leaders from across the state visited the school to see how the school successfully implements personalized learning. Dallas ISD Region 10 Education Service Center uh, and the TEA hosted the Blended Learning Grant Program Kickoff Summit that in total visited five Dallas ISD personalized learning schools. Also, uh, had a great time uh, this last weekend at the Preston Hollow Elementary Rapathon, where students wrapped Christmas gifts as part of a fundraising effort for the school's PTA. And I want to congratulate Long Middle School's Caitlin Schmidt for being named a finalist for Dallas ISD Secondary Teacher of the Year. Uh, also, he's a graduated, but I want to give a shout out to Woodrow grad Drew Wiles for winning the Dallas Half Marathon with an unbelievable time. Um, and um, Miguel stole my thunder, but I too want to thank Courtney Garrett and the team from Downtown Dallas Inc. for sticking with us through this process. Um, it has been uh, years in the making, and although there won't be discussion about it tonight, I'm sure you're grateful it stayed on consent, um, and we're all thrilled uh, to, that, the, that the item will pass uh, and that we'll soon have a Montessori school in downtown where we need it. So thanks very much for your efforts. Uh, that concludes the District 2 report. I just want to wish you all a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Thank you, Trustee Marshall. I'm going to do both my um, District 9 report and the District 6 report. I'm going to start with the District 6 report on behalf of Trustee Joyce Foreman, who's not able to attend tonight. Um, and if you, if you know anything about Trustee Foreman, only a doctor would keep her from attending and, and being an advocate for a community. So first, our prayers and thoughts are with her. She's going through recovery from her, from a her recent procedure. I'm going to read her report. So congratulations to Paul Obley, a math teacher at Barbara M. Mann's High School in District 6. He's one of seven Dallas ISD teachers who received $10,000 awards from Texas Instruments for consistently demonstrating quality instruction and building student achievement in the STEM subjects. Congratulations to two outstanding elementary teachers in District 6 who have been named finalists for the DIC Teacher of the Year. They are Francesca Asbury Jackson of T.L. Marcellus Elementary and Courtney Johnson of Humphrey Lee Elementary. Altogether, 11 teachers are finalists for the 2018-2019 Teacher of the Year. Kudos to all the finalists. Um, Trustee Foreman also wants to communicate. She's proud of the robotics team at Daniel Webster Elementary School in South Oak Cliff, who placed ninth out of 30 teams at a weekend robotics event. It was a job well done. Last but not least, James Johnson III, a fifth grader at Marcellus Elementary, is one of the eight outstanding young DIC public speakers who advanced to the finals of the MLK Oratory Competition. Congratulations and break a leg. Good luck in the finals, James. That concludes the District 6 um, accolades. Now with the District 9 accolades, um, I want to share that students and staff, along, along with alumni members and community members at Lincoln High School, have collected over 2,500 canned goods and raised over $1,500. They're feeding families and making donations to churches in the communities. It is a canned food drive to can the violence in our communities. Um, I want to also recognize the students at Frank Music Elementary who are paying it forward this holiday season. The students' annual canned food drive yielded more than 250 pounds of food through their annual canned food drive. The donation will provide access to 213 meals for children, families, and seniors in North Texas. The Dallas NAACP recently honored five District 9 students with 2019 Juanita Craft Scholarships in recognition of the scholastic achievement, school involvement in school, community service, and communication skills. The students each received $1,000, and there are 10 fields from Lincoln High School. To Shayla Ford for Irma Renhill Young Women's Leadership School, Francesca Jennings from Skyline High School, Jesus Ramos from Skyline High School, and Hannah Selders from Booker T. Washington High School for the Performing and Visual Arts. Congrats to all five of those students, and thank you for the NACP for contributing. City Lab High School students applied their project management skills to plan a Polar Express letters to Santa event for the students at Personalized Learning Prep at Sam Houston. 
The elementary students practiced their reading comprehension and writing skills as they created their holiday wish list for Santa. The event was featured on Fox 4 News. And uh, I want to give kudos to two deserving District 9 teachers selected as finalists for the DIC Secondary Teacher of the Year. Congrats to Cherie Countryman of Booker T. Washington High School and Marquita Tillman of Billy, Billy O'Dade Middle School. I also want to acknowledge um, a, f a few groups that have given to our schools. So Children's Health gave significant gifts to Edna Royal Elementary School, as did 7-Eleven via cash. Um, just today on Target Supplies, um, the CEO Trey Black donated um, toys and other um, items to Paul C. Dunbar in sunny South Dallas. And DSD Athletics partnered with um, W.A. Blair to also give gifts. So in the spirit of the holiday season, I really want to recognize all the the nonprofits, the organizations, the companies that are given to our schools in support of our kids. And um, that concludes the District 9 accolades. So we're moving on to item five, approval of minutes. Um, trustees, the following minutes have been submitted for approval. Superintendent's evaluation ad hoc committee November 14, 2019, the audit committee meeting, November 15, 2019, the public hearing on November 21, 2019, the call board meeting on November 21, 2019, the board meeting on November 21, 2019, the call board meeting on December 5, 2019, and the procurement ad hoc committee meeting Excuse that occurred on, you. bless you, um, December you. 6, 2019. Do I have a motion? Move to approve. Second. That has been moved and seconded that we adopt the minutes submitted for approval. Trustees, are there any corrections? And trustees, please cast your votes. Um, the motion, someone didn't vote. Oh, Ms. Borman. The motion passes 8-0. Thank you, Your Honor. Number six, consent agenda items. Consider and taste possible action to approve. Consent agenda item 6.01 through 6.37 as amended. Um, Trustees, we need, we have consent agenda item 6.01 through 6.37 as amended. Trustees, we need to pull item 6.18 for a separate vote due to a conflict of interest, and we need to pull item 6.24 off the agenda due to a bid protest. Do so I have a motion to approve the consent agenda item 6.01 through 6.37? Moved to approve. As second. amended. It has been properly moved and seconded. Um, there is no debate on the consent agenda items. Trustees, we please cast your votes. The motion passes 8-0. Okay, now moving on to the item pull for separate vote 6.18. Consider and take po due to a conflict of interest. Consider and take possible action to approve the amendment to the shared service agreement with member districts and charter schools for services in the Dallas Regional Day School Program for the Deaf. Do I have a motion? Move to approve. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Trustees, is there discussion? Trustee Marshall, just mic on or no? Okay, trustee, please cast your vote. Motion passes seven voting yes and one abstaining. Okay. The time is now 8.15 and this meeting is adjourned.